In this video and the next one, we will review probability distribution of a random variable. In this video, we look at probability distribution of a discrete random variable or discrete probability distribution. In the next video, we focus on probability distribution of a continuous random variable or continuous probability distribution. Let's officially define the concept of random variable first. Random variable is simply a numerical description of the outcome of an experiment. If a random variable may assume a finite number of values or an infinite sequence of values, it is then a discrete random variable. Technically, it means the number of experimental outcomes is countable if it is a discrete random variable. For example, let random variable capital X be the number resulted from rolling a die. X is obviously a discrete random variable, which can take six values from one through six. On the other hand, a random variable that can assume any numerical value in an interval or collection of intervals is a continuous random variable. For example, if capital X is the random variable representing the height of all possible players, X is apparently a continuous random variable. Now let's discuss probability distribution. Simply put, probability distribution of a random variable describes how probabilities are distributed over the values of the random variable. Two functions that are commonly used to describe a discrete probability distribution are probability mass function, PMF for short, and cumulative distribution function, or CDF. Some people call the latter cumulative density function. Either way, the abbreviation is the same, CDF. Conventionally, we use capital X or other capital letters to represent a random variable and use lowercase x or other lowercase letters to represent any possible value of the random variable. And PMF is often written as lowercase f of lowercase x, which is the probability that the random variable takes the value of lowercase x. And CDF is commonly written as capital F of lowercase x, which is the probability that the random variable takes the value that is less than or equal to lowercase x. Three common concepts that are often used to describe probability distribution are expectation or expected value, variance, and standard deviation. The expectation or the expected value of random variable capital X is simply the weighted sum of all possible values of x, where the weight is the probability that corresponds to each value of x. Variance is the weighted sum of squared deviation from the expectation, and standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. We will see an example in a moment. Now, let's look at the case of continuous random variables and their probability distributions. A continuous random variable also has a CDF, cumulative distribution or density function. The definition is also the same, which is the probability that the random variable takes the value less than or equal to a given value. Continuous random variables, on that hand, do not have PMF, probability mass function. Instead, they have probability density function, or PDF. And PDF is conventionally written as lowercase f of lowercase x, which is the first order derivative of CDF with respect to x. We try to avoid using much calculus. We simply present it here for your information. Intuitively, a continuous random variable can take on infinite many values, so the probability that 
the random variable takes on a specific value is essentially zero, technically speaking, the probability measure is zero. As a result, for a continuous random variable, PMF does not make much practical sense. Instead, we define probability density function PDF, which represents the rate of change in probability at a given value. The expectation, variance, and standard deviation are similarly defined. It's time for us to look at an example, and we focus on the discrete probability distribution. Here, the experiment is to roll two fair six-sided dice. The sample space will have 36 elements. They are 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and all the way to 6, 6. Now, let capital X be the sum of the two resulting numbers. What should be the PMF of random variable X? Well, capital X can only take 11 possible values. They are 2, 3, all the way to 12. And the PMF of X can be written in this tabular format for the sake of clarity. For example, f of 4 is equal to 3 over 36. That is, the probability random variable x will be equal to 4 is 3 over 36. If you think about it, there are three ways of getting 4. They are 1, 3, 2, 2, and 3, 1. What would be the CDF of random variable x then? Here, we just provide the answer. Hope you can fill in the details. Similarly, on this slide, I provide the answers to expectation, variance, and standard deviation of our random variable x defined in this example, and leave all the details to you. Now, let's consider bivariate distributions. Due to its complexity, we only talk about discrete case. Suppose capital X and Y are two discrete random variables. We can define the joint probability mass function and joint probability distribution function of X and Y. The way they are defined, as you can see here, is essentially the same as how we define PMF and CDF for one discrete random variable. As a matter of fact, Based on joint PMF, we can define marginal PMF for X and Y respectively, just like how we dealt with marginal probabilities in the joint probability table. Something new, well, sort of new, is covariance of X and Y. The formula for computing covariance between two discrete random variables is provided over here. We did talk about covariance of some data before. Over there, each data point in the data set is assumed to carry the same weight. Here, when we deal with two random variables with non-PMF, each value or data point no longer carries the same weight. So we have the formula for computing covariance as we see here, which takes different weights into account, and the different weights are just the corresponding probabilities. By definition, covariance of random variables x and y is the expected value of x minus e of x times y minus e of y. I'm hoping that you are able to derive the simpler version, that is, covariance of x and y is equal to e of x times y minus e of x times E of Y. Similarly, we define the independence between two random variables X and Y. X and Y are independent if and only if the joint probability F of X and Y is equal to the product of the two marginal probabilities. You can think of the joint probability as probability of event A intersect event B. Event A is that random variable capital X is equal to any value represented by lowercase x. Event B is that random variable capital Y equals any value represented by lowercase y. In other words, 
probability of A intersects B is equal to probability of A times probability of B, which is exactly how we define independence between two events. It's just that when dealing with two random variables, independence requires that the equation must be true for all pairs of values of x and y. If random variables x and y are independent, it is easy to show that, I hope you know how to do it, expectation of x times y is equal to expectation of x times expectation of y. As a result, the covariance of x and y is zero. The reverse, however, is not true. Hopefully, you can come up with an example of that. Let's look at some properties of expectation and variance. Kept x and y are two random variables, lowercase a, b, and c are constants, we have the following properties. Expectation of a times x plus b times y plus c is equal to a times the expectation of x plus b times the expectation of y and plus c. Variance of a times x plus b times y is equal to a squared times variance of x plus b squared times variance of y minus 2 times a times b times covariance between x and y. And if x and y are independent, variance of ax plus by will be equal to a squared times variance of x plus b squared times variance of y. This is obvious because covariance of x and y is zero when x and y are independent. Next, we will dive into some of the most useful discrete probability distributions. Let's look at the binomial distribution first. A binomial experiment consists of a sequence of n identical trials. For example, we flip the same coin n times. Two outcomes are possible on each trial. In our example, the two outcomes are head and tail. Suppose we call head a success and tail a failure. The probability of a success or a head in our example denoted by P does not change from trial to trial. Of course, the probability of a failure 1 minus P won't change from trial to trial either. In our example, both p and 1 minus p are 0.5, assuming we have a fair coin. As a matter of fact, following the logic of binomial experiment, we can come up with a way to test whether a coin is indeed fair. You will see this in great detail in one of the later videos, if I remember correctly in chapter 9. In the end, all the trials are independent in a binomial experiment. When the number of trials n is equal to 1, binomial becomes something we call Bernoulli or binary distribution. So, binomial experiment can be considered as the sum of n identical and independent Bernoulli experiments. Now, let's look at the binomial distribution of a binomial random variable x. Suppose n is the total number of trials lowercase x is the number of successes. Lowercase p is the probability of success on one trial. And lowercase f of x is the probability of x successes in n trials. Then the PMF lowercase f of x is given by this formula over here. The expected value of random variable x is n times p and the variance is n times p times 1 minus p. Let's look at an example of binomial distribution. In San Francisco, 30% of workers take public transportation daily. Take a random sample of four workers. Let x be the number of workers taking public transportation out of these four workers. We would like to find the PMF and CDF expectation and variance 
and answer a few other questions. The solution will be in a separate video, and I will use SciPy Stats module to answer these questions in Jupyter Notebook. Let's look at another important discrete probability distribution, Poisson distribution. In a Poisson experiment, the probability of an occurrence is the same for any two time intervals of equal length. Additionally, the occurrence or non-occurrence in any interval is independent of that in any other interval. The resulting probability mass function is given by lowercase f of x, which is equal to lambda to the power of x times natural number e to the power of negative lambda, then divided by x factorial, and e is equal to 2.718. Lambda is the expected number of occurrences in a unit of time. Poisson distribution is often used to describe the customer arrival process in queuing theory, and lambda is simply the average arrival rate of customers. Interestingly, the variance of a Poisson random variable is also equal to lambda, the mean of this Poisson random variable. Here's an example from the textbook. Phone calls arrive at the rate of 48 per hour at the reservation desk for regional airways and would like to answer the following questions. Once again, it will be done in a separate video using Python's SciPyStats module.